talk about cleaning and maintaining the data, particularly around master data governance, I'm going to focus a little bit now on process as well as technology. So SAP has a technology called SAP Master Data Governance. This is a, is a ABAP-based tool for SAP environments that allows you the orchestration of process and enforcement of policy for the creation of master data. It's native out-of-the-box integration. It um, has uh, an infrastructure footprint which is very light and allows you to leverage your business rules, your policies for validation and authorization in an automated way. But it's about making sure that the right data going into the production system is right. When we, when we at Utopia do an implementation of MDG or any master data solution, the first thing we want to look at is a strategy phase. We want to get our arms around um, what is the integrity of the data, so that profiling dimension. We want to understand what the business climate is, who is responsible for the data, who has the vision, who has the roadmap, who, has, who are the trustees. We identify standards and the data model, and we look for data governance to be consistent across the board. And most importantly, in this planning phase, you'll notice that nearly 80% of the effort is in our design, strategy, and standards phase. The actual deployment phase is rather light, and the reason is is because we're addressing things like with, with MDG and Master Data Governance, is how do we create data with integrity, with the right approval, with the right validation, with the right report tracking, and the right business rules and process flow. And getting this factor right up front means that from a deployment phase, it's actually quite streamlined because we have our roadmap, we have our blueprint. And so anytime you're entering into information governance or data management governance best practices, the best practices are right in front of you. Establish the data flow. Do the analysis on the data. Look for the weak points in the data. Establish your business rules. Make sure that those business rules are valid, timely, relevant. And the process flows around validation, who's approving, and what your reporting output requirements are. By setting up this, this best practice, by establishing this framework, right, your implementation of the technology becomes second nature. There's a lot of benefit with MDG as a tool, and the reason why we like it so much is because MDG, the tool, translates to master data governance and master data management, the process. It's integrated. It's reusable content. The business rules that you use for data profiling, the business rules that you use for data quality, are mapped specifically into the business rules you use for creation. And you have consistency in the data. You're ensuring data quality. Every drop of new data entered into your landscape, once the data is clean, remains in state. And so you can also do mass maintenance on the records. It's integrated with NetWeaver MDM. It's integrated with data services. It actually uses a runtime of data services. But ultimately, when you talk about master data governance, the tool, it's a lot about reusing standards, business rules, validations, and approvers. And the benefits are you're not going to allow anyone to get access to MMO1 or O3 and just be, start being very, very creative. So it's about locking down and enforcing governance around how data is created. So as we close out the presentation, we'll have time for Q&A. I wanted to address these three questions, and hopefully I have, but I've, I've laid them out again. So how do I directly save money with Master Data Governance Plan in place? Leveraging your own data as evidence for your business case. Right? Showing people the impact that data has on their decision making. Right? Eight different ball bearings for eight different prices, not a good idea. Let's consolidate that record. Let's have a single view. Align data and business processes to outcomes and decision making. Help people on the business side understand the impact that garbage in means garbage out. 
You're not going to reduce day sales outstanding if your invoices are filled with errors. What are the best practices in enterprise data management? Well, in our belief, there are multiple published best practices. I showed a number of them here today. They can be, but they have to be applied and measured against your own organization's ability to execute. A six-year-old football team can't throw the ball 35 yards. Even if the kid could throw it 35 yards, he wouldn't have the kids blocking. <laughs> so you have to have an organization mapped to what best practices you want to apply. You have to have balance between the two. It's about people and process and then ultimately leveraging and enabling technology. And then how do I create a framework for master data governance? I, sh I shared with you a reference architecture on applications and systems and uh, business processes aligned to, to data management. But then I also showed a data lifecycle framework that says look at the life cycle of data from creation through archival. And we looked at enterprise data management framework, that, that wheel, which talks about architecture considerations, data standards, data governance, quality, metrics, and change management. So that because there are multiple frameworks, leverage them, tailor them to your business, to your requirements, and then ultimately lather, rinse, and repeat. It's a repeatable process. What you do for customer, you can leverage for vendor. What you do for vendor, you can do for financial. There may be different nuances, but these are repeatable frameworks. Um, one last element on Utopia. A lot of things I share today we can illustrate for you in a cloud-based environment we call Utopia Labs. It's a demo center. It shows all the SAP EIM solutions. We have HANA running in the cloud. And we can take your data and show you your data before and after. We can show you the process flows. We can demonstrate MDG process flows. So we'd be happy to share with you uh, taking your own data, putting it in a, in, a, in a live demonstration environment, and showing you what's possible in your journey for enterprise data management. With that, I'm going to turn it back over um, to our host, and I thank you for your time, and I'd open it up to any questions or, or comments. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, John. Um, our first question is, could you detail about SAP's MDG product, its benefits, features, what should be the criteria for going MDM versus MDG? Ah, okay. So I did have a slide in here, which is an SAP slide, right, on MDG. Now, MDG, the tool versus MDM. Think of it this way. If you have a distributed environment with SAP and non-SAP systems, and consider these in this analogy that they're glasses of water, Right, all around the table, five glasses of water. What MDM does, NetWeaver, SAP NetWeaver MDM, what that solution does is has an excellent platform for taking all that water, all that data, if you will, from your distributed landscape and consolidating it into a single pitcher of water. Now the, now the water, or the data, has to be cleaned before it's entered into the pitcher. So that's where information steward and data services come into play. But in this example that I showed with the, with the ball bearing, you could have ball bearings in one system and ball bearings in another system, or it could be Tom Smith in one system and Thomas Smith in another. What MDM, NetWeaver MDM does, is it consolidates and harmonizes that data to a single view of the truth within a centralized repository. And then you can distribute from that centralized repository the single version of truth to multiple different systems and reporting outputs across the enterprise. Now what MDG does, SAP Master Data Governance does, is that Master Data Governance is really designed for that single drop at a time where data is created, one new drop of water at a time, into your ERP, ECC environment. And it's going to be cleansed, it's going to be pure, it's going to be perfect water at the point of creation. So MDM is a consolidation and harmonization in a distributed landscape. MDG ensures data integrity at the point of creation. One other note about MDG. MDG will say, depending on what you know, high percentage of data in an SAP landscape, that ECC can be your central master data repository. 
and that works in many, many cases. But as anyone's dealt with Z tables or different distributed data models or hierarchies or unstructured content, ECC is not necessarily ideal as a data repository because of that. So you can use MDM as your central repository and NetWeaver MDG as your creation, or you could use ECC as the repository, and MDG can do mass updates to the records within ECC. So a couple of choices there. They can work in harmony or they can work independent. Hopefully that answered the question. The next question is from Matt. It says, how does MDG complement NWMDM? Does an MDG have its own repository? What was the last part? Does an MDG? G have its own depository. Yeah, and that's almost an identical question. So, uh, and, and, it's a good, and it's a good question. It's something that a lot of folks, um, and, and, and in fact, have uh, maybe not, not heard. So MDM, separate database, its own repository, consolidating and harmonizing data across the enterprise, predominantly heterogeneous landscapes. You can have, like for example, if you call something soda in the northeast and pop in the southwest, uh, southeast, well, you can call soda in one region, pop in another. You can give it a customer number 12345 in the U.S. and AK1933B for Germany. And you could have a consolidated record in that MDM repository. With MDG, the tool that SAP, which is based in ABAP and has an SAP code set, this is for data creation and data maintenance. And the general rule of thumb I believe that SAP will promote and that we will promote is that based on the higher percentage of data which is going to be consumed by your applications that are SAP, is very well adapted to using ECC as the central repository. So if you have a large distributed heterogeneous landscape with multiple hierarchies and unstructured data, MDG is a, is a real winner. If you're primarily SAP and you just want to create data with consistency and then put that data into ECC, then MDG would be a good fit. But in my opinion, there's no reason why you can't take MDG for create with all the conformity to standards, with all the business rules being applied at the point of creation, routed, validated, existence check. Once the golden record is created, you can put it into ECC. Or if you're in a distributed landscape, you can create for non-SAP using MDG. Now, the reason I'm going back and forth on this is because over the years, architecturally, SAP has really opened up it's architecture. And so you have many, many different choices. And just as, you know, a, a classic example, two different shoe companies, one uses centralized master data governance, another one used decentralized. You've got architectural choices with MDG and MDM. And the answer, of course, is what is going to work best for your company? Is it widely distributed? That's an MDM play. Is it centralized and everything's in ECC? Well, maybe MDG is best because it'll use ECC as the repository. Hopefully that, that helps. 